So Chad, what happened to your car, dude? So you're driving to this big fancy hotel to go to this important convention, and all of a sudden... It just stank. It just smelled bad, huh? Stank like rotten radiator fluid. Gotcha. There's a reason why it stinks so bad, and that reason is... <laughs> you seem mildly amused. Uh, yeah, it's all good. So the way that we found this leak is you just fill up the antifreeze at the radiator. Now oftentimes you'll have two places. You'll have an overflow bottle and then you also have a radiator cap. Sometimes they're located at the end of the upper radiator hose up here on some of the Subarus and Toyotas and stuff. Uh, but long story short, you just take a drain pan, stick it underneath of there where you start to see it drip, and just keep filling it up. If you've got a big leak like this, you know, it's pretty easy to find because you can actually, you know, gravity's doing all the work that you need to find it. See, if you look in there close, you can see it just kind of wet with coolant and dripping. But if you can't find it, and if it's only doing it during certain times, what you can do is get a kit like this. I'll leave a link in the description. But in a nutshell, you've got all these different adapters. You just put one of those on your radiator, whichever one's going to fit, like that. And then you clamp this on. This one's off the tool truck, so it's a little overpriced. I think I paid almost $200 for this. I found a lot better deal on that for you. Pump it up, and then look at this. Go ahead and show inside of there. See where it's just spraying everywhere? How could you not find that? It makes it way easier to find stuff. It's like an arrow pointing where to look. I'll install the new water pump, but before I put the belt and the cover and everything else that goes on with it, I'll look at the radiator cap and see what it says. See this one says 1.1 atmospheres. Uh, so that's about 16 PSI on here. You can see in the yellow band where it says 1.1. So I'll pump it up to that and then I'll go eat something or go pay a bill or go do whatever and then come back. And if it's still holding, if it's still showing that it's good, I'll throw the belt on and get everything else done on it. So really awesome tool. Like I say, I'll do a link in the description. But remember, if this thing's leaked down to where there's no coolant in the system, then you don't have any coolant to trace to find the leak. So step number one, fill up the radiator. Basically look for something that looks like this, whether it's here or here, it doesn't matter. You just fill it up and then uh, check for where the coolant comes out. Make sure to use a drain pan or you'll have this all over your floor. Chad here is getting his first taste of Boy Named Sue by Johnny Cash. What do you think so far? It's pretty good. It's pretty funny, huh? <laughs> yeah. Alexa, stop! So anyway, we're working on this thing. Uh, we need to get this hose that does a little curly cue back there and then comes up here. Uh, as Chad was asking me, why did it fail? What made it break down? And is there anything you can do to prevent getting stranded in Park City, Utah with a car that's overheating? And my reply to that was, that'd be good to put in a video. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we're going to basically check his other hoses. You'll notice that where this failed, it was ballooned. It was all poofy right here. And the other thing that he's saying is it's so fat. When you look at the new hose and then look at the factory hose, the factory hose is just bloated like a dead cow on the side of the highway on the way to Lake Powell. We're going to use my favorite pliers, these 90 degree pliers off the top of the cart. And the reason why we use these is because they maintain parallel when you open and close them. You can see I cut mine, I put a slot in it on each side, and that's to make them more hose clamp compliant for those following along at home. I just made that up. As you can see, I can't even get it back over the hose because it's too fat. So we're going to get out a cutter. That never gets old. It's not exactly a switch blade, but it's pretty fun just the same. That'll work. I picked this up at the car parts place. I think I paid, felt like I paid too much. It was like 40 bucks or something. I'll find a better deal, put a link in the description. But you can set this any way you want. Say it doesn't fit here. You just push the little red button. Don't push the red button. <laughs> there it is, you push it, tilt it back like that. And it's just like getting a little bird beak in there wherever you want it. So it fits everything, it works on everything, and it works really, really well. It's made by the folks at Gear Wrench. This is not sponsored. I paid for this. 
Uh, but I just love it. Just like about everything else that they make, I love it. See how this just got all bloated and then blew out? It's really soft and squishy stuff. I'm just gonna cut the rest of this hose off, get it out of the way. I wish I'd quit old man grunting when I grab things. <laughs> Starting to concern me. All right, it's all about having tools and using tools. Makes the job go easier. This hose here is going in the garbage anyway, so there's no sense in fighting it. I got all the room in the world to twist and grab and pull and not break your heater control valve. How's that hose clamp, huh? Ta-da! Just slit the end of it just a little bit. They would give up really quick. The new hose is right here. Need to route this in around under here. All right, three, two, one, boom, and we're out. You see how those fit in the channels just like so? Helps you to hold on to it real good. Push on a little, there we go. How fun is that? Piece of cake. Imagine trying to do this with the distributor on. It's worth pulling three screws and two bolts. Trust me, believe you me, it's the way to go. So we got our hose done, we could call it quits, or we could put a thermostat in. So we're gonna get our other little Milwaukee tool besides the cutting one. Get her all dressed up in 10 millimeter and take her to town. I'll push a button with this, pry it up with the other, see if we can keep from breaking the whole thing off. All right, that's a little better. Now we might be able to get in there on that without breaking things. If something's in your way, move it. It's not like traffic, it's not like you know those things you run into on the freeway, you just if something's in the way, it's like you're in an armored truck or something. You just move it. I like Bob Ross. The happy little trees, you just kinda do what you want and play by your own rules. It's your car. Go ahead. Fix it. So what we're doing now is we're just getting this sucker to twist just a little. That twisting motion helps break it free. You can get it to twist in just even a couple of places. It makes a big difference. And back with the little crow head thing. This thing's just nuts. It's so fun. Do one more click. Just that little bit makes all the difference. It's like a Chinese finger trap. I can't even see back there, but... Grab hold of it and pull it. My hand's clear back here. If I slip, I won't bust a knuckle. Boy, this sucker's really on there. Sometimes I'll grab hoses and twist them with these. Sometimes I'll hook onto them and do stuff too. Wherever you need a steel finger, we should be good to go. This is not a strong tool. It's like blowing with your mouth versus the air compressor. But it does cover some ground. And it's not nearly as loud as your screaming air ratchet, so. If you get it going first and then put it on the bolt, I find that helps sometimes. So this one's just the hold everything bracket. So like I say, I'm gonna just get it spinning first and then it'll crack it free. Otherwise, you've got no promise. Give it a little tap. Get her to come free. There's our thermostat. It's like cracking open an egg. Pull that out. Of course, spring goes to the engine. That's the spring that is affected by the coolant. It's a bimetal spring that contracts when it gets to a certain temperature. So, see there's a little space at the top here for air to get by. You want to make sure that you put your thermostat in just so. See like that. Got a couple of little snake bites that correspond with the housing in here. Make sure you get the bubbler in the right place. The bubbler's this little brass piece here. In my last video on that Jeep Cherokee, we drilled a hole. This we don't have to. It's got a bubbler to help pass it through. All right, so that's all lined up. I just stick it in there until my little snake bite things line up and put it back in, put her back together. It's not a big deal if you're already making a big antifreeze mess everywhere. It's the time to do it. All 
I don't want to go too tight or it'll make the bottom stick out. There you go. Bob's your uncle. Hook in our hose and wrap this sucker up, put her to bed. That five radiator hose back on. Get your little clamp pliers again, because you can. There's something there blocking. Uh, here's a trick, pay attention. Wake back up, here we go. So when you pull these each direction and you have it lined up in the old marks, you're a lot less likely to leak where you might otherwise. You heard it here first. I had so many cars where I put everything exactly back the way it goes. And then lo and behold it leaks. What the heck? So then I pull on the clamp and all of a sudden it doesn't leak and it holds for years. Aha! Uh -huh. Lesson learned. And uh, you just learned it from me, so you're welcome. Okay, so when we pulled this out, this was pointing in this direction. So we're going to return to that. In you go. You can just take her home. The other one's slotted. Doesn't sound right, does it? I was watching Mr. Regular from, is it Regular Reviews or Regular Cars? Regular Car Reviews? Something like that. Mr. Regular, he was talking about a video game convention. He's talking about slots and tabs, the male to female ratio. <laughs> like slots and tabs, all right. I guess that works. That guy's funny, he cracks me up. Oh yeah, distributor cap. Slap that baby on there. So I was showing Chad something cool here a second ago. These things just fall off your screwdriver, but there's a tool, it's called a 410 by Weeha. Seriously, that's what the name is. So you can magnetize or demagnetize something. So you run it through the magnetize. I kind of slide it on the side, go through it a couple of times, and then it's gonna stay on really good. And then if you don't want it to have it be like that, you can actually demagnetize. I don't know exactly the correct method for doing that. But then it basically, it'll stick to that because it's magnetized. It'll demagnetize stuff. I have my hand ready because it's just going to fall off. You see how cool that is? Is this magnetic or what? No. And then you go through where it says magnetize. You run your whole screwdriver through it a bunch of times like this. It'll magnetize your screwdriver. It'll magnetize your screws. It'll just get you all kinds of where you need to be. What it does is it just aligns the electrons or the magnetic field of it. Makes it all happy. So it fell off before. Now it won't fall off. I'm not messing around. That's just what the tool does. I didn't even know they existed until a while ago. It's like I must have that. But for stuff like this, so these little screws on this where they're not retained or detentioned, you have to. Again, links in the description. I need to magnetize the screwdriver to my hand. We are sitting pretty. We got you a new thermostat. We're all set up, ready to do a pressure test. Let's leave these here for now. Probably benefit from filling up the radiator with antifreeze, don't you think? Chad, how do you feel about recycling? Give us a little five minute rundown. Share your feelings. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Knew you were going to say that. All right, we're going to enter up this. Uh, tool install with a quick message from my t-shirt here to tell you what doesn't kill you makes you stronger except for tail rotors they'll straight up kill you <laughs> love that shirt everybody's always worried about the main rotor blades the rotor wing and they forget about the tail rotor so we've saved what came out of it. Just pour it through the paint strainer. Back in the car. In you go. It takes out all the boogies that it picked up on the way down to the floor. If it ain't bad, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, reuse it. Save money, save a trip, and save all kinds of energy loss for having to recycle it the other way if it's still good. Alright, that didn't take much, did it? Put a link in the description for these. These are great for bleeding air out of the system too. They're just awesome. Now for the most important part. Gotta put the coolant back in. 
That's the whole reason we did the job is to make sure we had coolant staying in there. Hey Chad, go ahead and film me right in the face. That's perfect. You're doing great. So the question is, is what about all this wetness on electrical stuff? Is that bad? Is that going to hurt anything? And the answer is no. This car is designed to really handle a lot of water. If you hit water on the freeway, it's not supposed to break down and leave you sitting in the middle of the road stranded. It won't hurt it. So, I mean, you can hose it off. I've done videos on pressure washing cars, and ironically, you get all kinds of uh, flack and uh, negative feedback on that. But such shouldn't be the case. It's made to take it. All of your connectors. In fact, let me just show you real quick. When you look at the connector, you can see they're really tight tolerances. But they've also got a little rubber silicone seal in there that helps to seal it so that no water can get in. And you see that gray silicone seal that's flexible in there? That keeps the water from getting into the connector too. Everything's pretty well waterproofed and fit to go sloshing in the puddles like galoshes. So we've got this pumped back up to 1.1 atmospheres as you see on the yellow part. And so let's let it sit there for a minute, make sure we don't have any leaks. And once we're satisfied and there's no drips, We'll let the pressure off, put the radiator cap back on, and call it good. Right, now for the very most important part of the whole job. Now this is critical, I want you to really pay attention. It's not this. <laughs> you thought it was that. Whatever, that's easy. So what you do when you're done with any job is you look across the car, see if you left any tools, see if anything's unplugged, see if you've got anything that's going to dent the hood or damage the hood when you go to close it, and clear it. In this case, I've got a magnet hanging from the hood. I gotta clear that, and then I got a shop light. These shop lights are freaking awesome. I was in uh, Costco. I picked these up. They got them on Amazon cheap too. But they just put a little coat hanger on it. I use it as an underhood thing. It's great for lighting. You ever wonder where I get such great lighting? It's this is LED. If you come in here close, see if we can keep from hitting a bird. It's uh, Feet Electric. I'm not sponsored by them either. I'm not sponsored by anything in this. The only thing that kind of is I got sent this for free to check out. But these are awesome. If you look up on the ceiling, pretty much everywhere that I want light. I got it over the workbench. I glued a magnet on the top of this one here. You can see that black dot. So that when I stick that hanger, it just stays there. And that way when I go to hang it up, of course they don't come this way when you buy them. You got to get out your glue gun and a magnet, but how hard is that? It's not. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. The old judge wasn't happy when they brought the cowboy in. The charge was seagull poaching. It was time for discipline. Time to teach that feller that we all should coexist. Else them seagulls might end up on some endangered species list. And so the judge demanded Jake tell the reason why the environment got trampled and that seagull had to die. Jake says, Well, I was lost out on the prairie, Judge, and I sees this bird up in a tree. Well, I hadn't had in several days, Your Honor. What was either him or me? Well, the old judge felt compassion. That cowboy seemed sincere. Said he'd join the Save a Seagull Club and be a volunteer. And so the judge dismissed the case. To pursue it seemed a waste. But then he says, Jake, tell me, just how does seagull taste? Jake says, well, well, Judge, I'd say it's similar to any other fowl. It's a little like a bald eagle, but more like a spotted owl.